So all the pieces I want to pack together now, um, you know, have been unwrapped. Now, how do you know which things have been actually unwrapped together? If you you know, and, and which ones are going to be pieced together. Well, all of them are going to have the same material on them. So we can easily go about making sure that we pick everything. So I'm just going to go around and just make sure I pick all these pieces. And we need that one as well. And we'll just do an isolate just to make sure we've isolated everything and not got things that we don't want. Isolate is your friend. Use it often. There is Alt-Q for isolate and Control-Alt-Q, um, which will continue to isolate things if you want instead of unisolating and uh, whatnot. Or sorry, Control-Alt-Q will unisolate each time, whereas Alt-Q will continue to isolate as you pick things. Uh, so slightly different. I use both all the time. So all of these have got to belong together. So I'm going to go back to this checkerboard pattern that I've got, um, you know, and just check it out and see what I've got. So I'm going to apply that, but let's give this a name. So I'm going to call this the um, amp cabinet. And, you know, we're going to be able to, you know, we'll eventually replace the uh, checker pattern on here. Uh, with the uh, the materials and whatnot that we get back from Substance. But we want to be naming that shader because over in Substance, when we send all of this over there, we want to be able to identify which shader is controlling what parts. Now, if you're wondering why I did that, if you ever wonder which ones are going to be uh, packed together again, we can go back to our material, right click on it, and you'll find Select. And you can select by material and it'll open this selection and it'll actually identify and show you everything that's been selected. Now, right now, we're not showing all of the uh, uh, you know, visible items. There they all are. So there's all the ones that are hidden right now because I had uh, you know, in isolate mode and select them. So that I know all belong together and they're all going to uh, belong together in this case. Now we want to go about packing these. So with them all selected. I'm going to go and add another unwrap, open my UV editor, and there it all is. There's the incredible mess that is all of this. Okay, so if you want now, we can just go ahead and run that pack. I like rotate on, and so I'm going to go ahead and run that. It's going to take a second for it to run with all these pieces. So this is what it looks like after I packed it, which is a disaster. And it's partly a disaster because all of those little tiny strips are this amp covering here that we had in a nice square. So I just hit pack. I just went, go ahead and unfold this and pack it down. And so the quick peel, you know, maybe it wasn't a good idea on all of the pieces and every single element that's here. So maybe we should be using the pack. Now, what I sh did was I made sure all the pieces were flat and now we want to go ahead and pack them but we probably don't want to pack something like this because it considers each one of these strips as a separate element a separate piece and on my poor old computer that I have right now this pack took quite a while because of all those little tiny pieces so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some manual packing here and I'm going to undo what it just did so that I can go ahead and um, you know, make sure that this screen on the front stays as one rectangular piece and we'll put it in a corner somewhere. Now that make that work a little bit better, what I did was I actually just put on an, another unwrap because I realized I can't even select this screen in its uh, by itself and move it out of this UV space to get it out of the way because I can't say select by element because it's piles of little tiny elements. All the other pieces aren't going to be a concern to me. I can pack all those little screws separately and whatnot, but I want this screen separate. So let's go back for a second. You know, I'm just going to delete this um, off the top here, and I'm going to go back. And I'm going to select just the screen, and we're going to go, um, you know, we left that unwrap on there that we didn't need, but I'll just, so I can just use it, or I could actually use the unwrap window and, and uh, move the UV space. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything in here. So I'm just going to select it all and I'm just going to get this out of my UV space to begin with so I'm just going to move it over to the side so I can easily select it and be able to work with it so now that I've got that let's go back and I'm just going to turn off uh, sub object select everything again unwrap let's see what we've got now so what you can see now 
is that unwraps over to the side for that piece. So I can now take all of these um, these pieces here. Let's go and do it by polygon. So I'm going to grab all of just these elements. Now, I believe this needs to be done in uh, more recent uh, versions of Matt. I think that the custom pack may work on selections, actually. But the unfold now works on selections uh, as well, which is nice. So uh, let's just go and say I'm going to rotate and just custom pack this. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll have to wait again. So here's the result of this pack that's happened. And, you know, again, we're, we should go around and inspect and make sure that we're actually seeing, you know, really good checkerboard pattern that things are kind of squared off. Prefer that. I mean, if you're trying to paint textures and all your UVs are on crazy angles, so some are have some pieces are having to deal with, um, you know, anti-aliasing a straight edge and other pieces are straight to the pixels, you're going to end up with different results. You can see there's a bit of an angle here but not big deal you know um, and it just makes more sense if pieces are the right way up uh, this doesn't really necessarily know which is the top and bottom so sometimes packing manually is a good idea but if you look at this we've got all of our pieces here there's the corner pieces you know we've got elements here and whatnot now we have some wasted but here's this gigantic chunk on the front what I can do now is I can go about making sure that I scale this down so I'm going to select this piece and then you know one of two things I can use the scale tool here but of course the problem with the scale tool is you can make it non square so if you hold down um, you know uh, certain hotkeys like um, shift while you do that you can scale it and it'll keep it uniform it'll want to sort of either go on a 45 degrees or an angle you can see it's it's moving so slow on me partly probably partly because of my recording going on, but also uh, partly because my system sucks at this point. Um, I'm just gonna undo and wait for this to undo. Instead, I'm gonna use the scale tool, so R, and now I can grab it and just scale it uh, uniformly um, across the whole thing. Now, you gotta be a little careful because it's going to be tricky to, to grab it from a distance because it's uh, so many tiny little uh, bits and pieces. But I want to keep these all together because it's going to be far, far easier uh, to work with this. So let's move it over to where it's going to be. And I guess I should probably just go ahead and lock my selection and make sure that I can't actually deselect it. That would be the easiest way. So I'm going to go and put this over here and uh, over to my scale. And I'm going to pull this down. Nice and small and jam it in that corner up there. Okay, of course, Z for zoom, uh, zoom selected uh, works in the unwrap window as well. And there it is packed into the corner. Now we've got some wasted UV space. Um, and we could think about packing other elements in there to, uh, to fill that up. Or we could think about ways possibly of, you know, expanding some of the other pieces, you know, to, to fit them in. Uh, Tetris it a little bit more by scaling pieces up and, and playing with it by hand. That is almost always the best way. You're going to get slightly better results when you do that. I see that if I move these two pieces, rotate them 90 degrees, pack them on the side, I'll save some pixels down the side, move these up and to here I might be able to scale everything into place a bit more you know so it's how much work do you want to do um, this is a bunch of wastage to me it's too much wasted and I'd rather be able to go back and manually pack these things by hand okay and fit them all in and I just realized I've got some overlaps happening so I'm just going to go in and just move this back over so that's in the right place now something you want to check and you want to make sure that things are not overlapped I'm going to turn off the uh, the lock selected I'm just going to deselect everything again in polygon mode we're going to go to select overlapping and we're going to see if any of them get overlapped it I expect this to cause me a ton of problems so this is going to come up with a pile of red on it and it calls me a liar because I'm not hundred percent certain but it's not coming up with a pile of red on this and it really should, maybe because they're too small or something. It's not finding them, but that's all overlapping pieces. But again, we don't care. This is, you know, that piece isn't going to be a big deal. So there it is, packed, ready to go out. It's all got one material on it, so we can easily identify what it is that's all packed together here. We can take a look at the um, 
you know, the, the checkerboard pattern. You can see that actually just at a guess, I managed to get the checkerboard pattern on the, um, you know, the same as the outside here. This means that the pixel density of the, uh, of, of all the pieces are going to be about the same. So this all looks really good. This is basically ready to get um, sent over to Substance to paint on it. So let's go about unwrapping other elements now to ensure that we've got the whole lamp and we can send it over and start working on it.